Hey everybody, it is Priddle Monday. Monday, the best day of the week. Why is it the best day of the week? Because on Priddle Monday, here where the puzzles met, shoot, I messed it up. Where the puzzles are real, but the cookies don't matter. We are here to have some fun. We are here to get better at armchair treasure hunts by working on puzzles and riddles. Hey, Sonny. <laughs> I liked I like Jimmy Fast Riddle too. Hey Lori James, I'm glad you can make it. We're trying to here to get better at armchair treasure hunts. How can we do that? We get better by going um, by working on puzzles and riddles. We're working on our lateral thinking. We're working on increasing our vocabulary and sort of get our brains thinking outside the box. Working on our lateral thinking. Hey Davio, hey Huli, I'm glad you can make it. I've been starting these Priddle Mondays with um, going over this article from Mysterious Writings. And this is going to be the last one of these uh, because the last one is about an internet scavenger hunt, which I think is pretty straightforward. Uh, but the one I want to talk about today is Morse code. Morse code, you might be thinking, well, it's pretty straightforward. It's dots and dashes. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been used a long time in the military it was used. Uh, but there are ways you can take Morse code and you can you can sort of hide it in a different way. And the, the way it was one of these ways that was done differently was in one of the Forrest Fan gold medallion hunts that was done by Jenny Kyle over at Mysterious Writings. One of her treasure hunts. This is the tre for treasure hunt number eight. Uh, this is this is what the was given out. There was a series of numbers of. One, two, and three. One, two, 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 three, one, two, three. And the way she hid that for using the Morse code is, you know, one was either dot and dash. Let me see. Let me see what it actually says. One was dot, two was dash, and three was a space. So even though you might be familiar with um, Morse code with dots and dashes, by having it in just a change, a slight twist. By having it, in this case, ones, twos, and threes, that's how you can take something that might be straightforward looking for deciphering a code and make it a little more hard, a little harder. Uh, in this case, the Morse code spells out March 4th into the state. And this was a confirmer that the state was Vermont because Vermont was uh, admitted into the Union in March 4th, 1791. Hey, Capro, who else is here? Treasure Hunter is here too. Hey everybody, I'm glad you can all make it. So today we're going to do some riddles. We're going to do some little tricky brain teasers and hopefully we'll have some fun also. So let's get started. This first riddle, make sure you can see it. I think you can see that. A little bit. All right. Let me take this over just a tad. That should do it. Hey, Treasure Hunter, I'm glad you can make it. A man decides to quit his job, so he turns off the lights and walks out of the room and 200 people die. Why do 200 people die? This is our first riddle for today. Uh, I'll admit I haven't looked at the answer for this one. I usually try to look at some of these. This is a new website. But I thought I'd try to see if we can figure out this one without going to the answer. A man decides to quit his job, so he turns off the lights and walks out of the room and 200 people die. Why do 200 people die? Hospital, air traffic controller. Hmm. I like those answers. A man decides to quit his job, so he turns off the lights and walks out of the room, and 200 people die. Why do 200 people die when he turns off the lights and walks out of the room? Oh, he's a pilot. Okay, this one I like, this one I like the best. <laughs> yeah, Marty Bird likes pilot too. I, I think pilot works. Lighthouse man. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, a lighthouse keeper. You're thinking it's a... Uh... Yeah, I could see that. 
I kind of like the pilot answer, though. All right, I'm going to look at the hint. Let's see what the hint is. If the lights were left on, the people wouldn't have died. The light would have helped guide someone. Okay, this is... He's a light man. Double meaning? The light would have helped guide someone. That kind of helps with the lighthouse. A man decides to quit his job, so he turns off the lights and walks out of the room, and 200 people die. Why did 200 people die? All right, let's see what the answer is. He worked either a lighthouse or an air control center when he turned off the lights. The captain couldn't see and crashed. <laughs> Cabin isn't a room. I, I understand where you're going. <laughs> All right, so air traffic controller by Marty. I'm going to give two cookies for this one because this is Prudel Monday where... The puzzles are real, but the cookies don't matter. And K-Pro gets a cookie, too, for Lighthouse Keeper. Hey, sweetie. Glad you could make it. And let's go to our next riddle. Oh, goodness. This is this. Okay. A farmer has to get a sack of corn, a chicken, and a fox across the river. The farmer is only been one of those. Uh... Okay, I think we, we've done this. We've done this one before, or, or a similar one. <laughs> Double cookies. All right. A man dies of thirst in his own home. How is this possible? A man dies of thirst in his own home. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm giving up on the, the crossing the river one. We've, we've had that one before, and it, it does take some time to work on it. A man dies of thirst in his own home. How is this possible? Level 42, he didn't drink any water. A man dies of thirst in his own home. Is this something like, um, we've had this before or similar. Maybe it's his home is a boat and he runs out of water on the boat. Pipes were frozen, didn't have a desalination, ate too much salt in the ocean on a boat. Okay, K-Pro likes, I, K -Pro likes the, the boat situation too. He froze... All salt water can't drink it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board, K-Pro. I like that answer, too. All right. We've got a lot of empty well. Let's look at the hints. Think about different type of houses that man can live in. All right. I think I think rabies. Tom Hanks in that movie. <laughs> what is that? What was that movie called? It was... Um... I know the one you're talking about. Water, water everywhere, not the draw. All right, I think the ants. I think we got the answer now. Man lives on a houseboat in the middle of the ocean with no fresh water. All right, we've had two riddles, and that's two cookies for K Pro. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Castaway. There we go. Castaway. All right, let's move on to the next riddle. A horse, a rope, and the hay. A horse is tied to a 15-foot rope, and there is a bale of hay 25 feet away from him. Yet the horse is able to eat from the bale of hay. I don't think that's how you spell bale in this case, but I'm, okay. How is this possible? Horse and the rope and the hay. Horse is tied to a 15-foot rope, and there is a bale of hay 25 feet away. Yet the horse is able to eat from the bale of hay. How is this possible? Rope is not attached to anything. All right. I like Hooli's thinking. 
A horse is tied to the rope, but it doesn't say that the rope is tied to something else. <laughs> All right, everybody seems to like the rope is not attached thing. There's a bale of hay 25 feet away, yet the horse is able to eat. How is this possible? Rope isn't tied to the other. Okay, everybody seems to come to the same conclusion. Let's look at the hint. Don't assume too much. The key has to do with the rope. All right. I think Huli got that one. Rope isn't tied to anything. Good job, Huli. Huli gets a cookie. Come on. Oops, wrong spot. There we go. Cookie for Huli. Next riddle. A man walks into a bar and asks for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a shotgun and points it at him. The man says, thank you, and leaves. Why? Okay. A man walks into a bar. I, I think we've had this one before, but I don't remember the answer to it. A man walks into a bar and asks for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a shotgun and points it at him. The man says, thank you, and leaves. Why? The bartender. Asks for a glass of water. Oh, recovering alcoholic. Shots, no glasses. I see where you're going. You're using the word play there, Laurie. I like it. He asked for a glass of water, a shotgun. You're taking the word shot like it is used in, um, used in bars. A man walks into a bar, asks for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a shotgun, points it at him. The man says, thank you, and leaves. <laughs> Why did he want the water? Yeah, that's, okay, um, there's some... We're reading something too much into something here. I agree, Caper. Why did he want the water? He asked for a glass of water. What if it's a squirt gun? Oh, the man was on fire? <laughs> okay. Hey, Evan. <laughs> Shot glasses, yep, yep. Was it a, a squirt gun? One of those... All right, let's see what the hint is. Think about why someone would want a glass of water at a bar. Think about why the man says thank you after the bartender points a shotgun at him. I'm, I'm still thinking squirt gun. <laughs> why there's collecting cookies. <laughs> All right. One last chance. A man walks into a bar and asks for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a shotgun and points it at him. The man says thank you and leaves. All right, what's the answer? The man had hiccups. Water helped him stop it, but the gun scared him, which also stops it. Yes, hiccups. Oh. Okay, bro, there you just, you just so the water and the shotgun both solves the problem. You are on the right track, Capro. Yeah, the man had hiccups, and the water helped him stop it. But the gun, when he pulls out the gun, that scared him, which also stopped his hiccups. Capro, okay, you're on the right track. <laughs> she says stupid <laughs> no it makes sense all right everybody everybody hates that one all right i thought that was a good one <laughs> uh, okay next one i don't think anybody got that one. two doors you approach two talking doors one door leads to the city of truth the other door leads to the city of liars you do not know which door is which. You are able to ask only one question to deter determine 
which door is which. The door that leads to the city of liars always lies, while the door that leads to the city of truth always speaks the truth. You want to go to the city of truth. What question do you ask to determine which door leads to the city of truth? We got two talking doors. Ask what the other door would say. What would the other door, door say, says Jimmy Fast. So Vegas and Utah. <laughs> uh, city of, you approach two talking doors. One door leads to the city of truth. The other door leads to the city of liars. You do not know which door is which. You are able to ask only one question to determine which door is which. The door that leads to the city of liars always speaks lies, while the door that leads to the city of truth always speaks the truth. You want to go to the city of truth. What question do you ask to determine which door leads to the city of truth? Yeah, yeah, I got what you're saying, Davio. What, you ask her your own name, ask her your birthday. It makes sense. But I think that... But I think what the question is looking at, I think Jimmy Fast has it. Ask what the other door would say. So if you're asking the door that always lies, he would say, go to the other one. No, he would say, go to my... Okay, wait a minute. What would the other door say? So the, if you ask that to the truth door, okay, ask any question you know the answer to. Hmm. All right, let's, let's look at the hint, or what hints. Ask a question that will involve both doors. Okay, that leads, that leads to what Jimmy, Jimmy Fast said. Ask what time it is, one will answer it correct, and one will lie. So you have to ask them both what time it is. Because we're trying to, you have to ask a question that you can ask both doors, is what it sounds like. I think Jimmy Fast has it, but let's look at the answer. All right, let's see. Ask the door. If I were to ask the other door, which door at least, what would he say? And then you pick the opposite door. Okay, that makes sense. Another one is if I asked you which door leads to the city of truth before, which door would you have told me? Okay, we didn't have anyone to ask a door. Do both doors lead to the city of truth? Do both doors lead to the city of truth? If one answer is no, it's the truth door. Okay. Ask where the treasure is located for poor Sven. <laughs> uh, all right, Jimmy Fast gets a cookie. Keep putting it in the wrong spot. There we go. How deep is the hole? <laughs> what is specialized knowledge? <laughs> All right, here we go. Another, another man is lying dead with a backpack on, face down in the desert. What happened? You like the third one? Ask a door, do both doors lead to the city of truth? If the answer is, answer is no, it's the truth door. If the answer is yes, it's the liar's door. Yeah, I like that one too. A man is lying dead with a backpack on, face down in the desert. What happened? <laughs> All right, my thinking, I was thinking backpack. Shoot didn't open. I like that one, Davio. It's not specific enough. Oh, I'm thinking it's he's in space and that the man died in space and his face is that large like on uh, on the moon where the moon would be a desert. 
backpack is full of gold. <laughs> DB Cooper in the parachute. I like the shoot one best. Someone else likes Lori's backpack is full four cents gold. Yeah, I, I got Davio. I, I like your answer best so far. Well, I like my answer too. I think I think it's he's on the moon. He ate too many cookies with no milk. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, it's it. Everybody thinks the parachute. Think about what could be in the backpack. All right, I think that's it. Parachute failed open. Good job, Davio. Davio gets a cookie. That's a good. That's a good riddle too. All right, what am I? It's more powerful than God. Is more evil than the devil. The poor. Ha okay, we've had this one before. <laughs> The poor have it, the rich need it. If you eat it, you'll die. What am I? Hit the wrong more more his fault. <laughs> All right, we've had this one before, but I guess it can't hurt to do it again. I don't remember the answer to to be honest. The poor have it, the rich need it. It's more powerful than God. It's more evil than the devil. The poor have it. The rich need it. If you eat it, you'll die. What am I? Okay, there it is. Okay, Sonny has it. It's nothing. Right, right. Nothing is more powerful than God. Nothing is more evil than the devil. The poor have it. The poor have nothing. The rich need nothing. They have no needs. The rich need nothing. If you eat nothing, you'll die. What am I? Good job, Sonny. Sonny gets a cookie. Maybe I'll remember some of these. <laughs> the one who makes it sell. So, okay. Here's another one we've had before. The one who makes it sells it. The one who buys it doesn't use it. The one who's using it doesn't know he's using. What is it? I'll get my cookie ready. This one I remember. We've had this one probably more than once. I got my cookie ready. The one who makes it sells it. The one who buys it doesn't use it. The one who's using it doesn't know he's using it. What is it? Uli got it. Coffin. She, she spelled it differently, but... <laughs> it's a coffin. Yes. Good job, Uli. Next one. Paragraph below. The paragraph below is most unusual. How quickly can you find out what's so unusual about it? It looks so ordinary, you'd think nothing was wrong with it. And in fact, nothing is wrong with it. It is unusual, though. Why? What is unusual about the paragraph above? All right. Gatsby was walking back from a visit down in Branton Hills Manufacturing District on a Saturday night. A busy day's traffic had had, had its noisy run. And with not many folks in sight, his honor got along without having to stop to grasp a hand or talk. For a mayor out of City Hall is a shining mark for any politician. And so, coming to Broadway, a booming bass drum and sounds of singing told of a small Salvation Army unit carrying on amidst Broadway's night shopping crowds. Gatsby, walking towards that group, saw a young girl back toward him just finishing a long, soulful oration. Hmm. Somebody says no, Evan Penn says no E. The above passage is taken from the book Gatsby, written by Ernest Vincent Wright in the late 1930s. What is unusual about the paragraph above? Gatsby was walking back, <laughs> too long, from a visit down in Branton Hills Manufacturing District on a Saturday night. A busy day's traffic had had its noisy run, and with not many folks in sight, his honor got along without having to stop to grasp a hand or talk. For a mayor out of City Hall is a shining mark for any politician. And so, coming to Broadway, a booming bass drum and sounds of singing told of a small Salvation Army unit 
carrying on amidst Broadway's night shopping crowds. Gatsby, walking towards that group, saw a young girl back towards him, just finishing a long, soulful oration. No E's. Oh, and the whole thing, there are no E's. Wow. Yeah, so I, I saw it. Who's, somebody said Evan Penn got that first. I didn't quite see what he meant. <laughs> That's a lot to write without ease. Wow. No ease in all of that. I was watching a YouTube video on cryptic crosswords and there's a term for it where they have everything missing one letter and somebody did the whole clues and answers all had no ease in it. And there's a term for it and I've forgotten what the term was. Maybe it'll be in the answer here. There's no E in the whole passage, but it's the most commonly used letter in the English language, but there are no E's used. I think Evan, Evan got that one. Yep, Evan got it. Evan gets a cookie. All right, that's, that's a different one. What has fun... Five, sometimes four hands, but is normal. <laughs> what has five hands, but is normal? And sometimes four. <laughs> what has five hands, sometimes four, but is normal? My, my first brain goes to a clock, but a clock has two hands. Five hands, but is normal. What has five hands, but is normal? Oh, a horse. Okay, that's a, that's a used for uh, vertical height is hands. I know what you're talking about, Davio. Poker game. A gibbon. Is that a poker poker everybody's focused on poker a person wearing a a person wearing a watch okay I like where you're thinking Steve stopwatch a ranch oh you're thinking like um um, work hands, okay. Bridge game. Yep, I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a... Hands is a use the term for, for height. So he, you're thinking miniature horse. I got you. I got you, Davio. Game of spades. I, I bet you it might be some type of card game. Let's see what the hint is. You see this almost every day. Some of the hands can be taken off. You see this almost every day. Some of the hands can be taken off. Okay, it's not a card game. Some of the hands can be taken off. It's, it's, it's an object. This Whatever the answer is, it's going to be something and I'm going to I'm going to do one of those forehead slaps. Poker is a 4 and 5 card game like poker. <laughs> you like poker. I know, okay, bro. You, so what has 5 hands but is normal? Sometimes 4. You see it almost every day. But one of the hints is some of the hands can be taken off, which makes me think it's not a card game. I know your guys are talking about card games. A clock only has two hands. Well, I guess three if you consider the, the seconds hand.
I bet it's like a synonym of hands. Yeah, five, five cards, but we're talking about hands. And I'm thinking it's not a card game based on the hints. Hmm. A clock and a takeoff watch? Okay. So maybe we're thinking it's someone who has like a a pocket watch and a wrist watch where one of them has seconds one one does or one has could be all right i'm gonna give it 10 more seconds come on sweetie sweetie i want you to answer <laughs> Someone wearing a watch with a second hand. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, Lori. Come on, sweetie. Mm -hmm. I like what you're, yeah, I, I agree what you're thinking, Sassy and Lori. It's a toilet. <laughs> Evan thinks nobody got it. Oh, goodness. It's, well, what else is, is a, could have a hand, an object, but something a different term instead of a clock, card game? I like Davio's idea of the horse, but it, it seems like it's something else since some of the hands can be taken off. Hmm. Is it something like a clock? It could even be a person with a watch that all has both. So then you'd have the person would have two hands and the clock, either as a wristwatch or a pocket watch, it would have either two or three hands. Broadway play, just so the answer we will put. <laughs> all right, all right. A person wearing a non-digital watch, an average person has two hands and a minute hand and the hour and sometimes a second hand. Okay. We went, it was not as hard as we thought it was. <laughs> All right, who was the first one? A person, all right, I'm giving it to Steve. A person wearing a watch. <laughs> Steve gets this one. Cookie for Steve. <laughs> there, bring on the boots. <laughs> All right. The music stopped. The woman dies. Why? It sounds like a song. <laughs> Everybody hates it. All right. <laughs> the music stopped. The woman dies. Why? <laughs> the music stopped. The woman dies. It sounds like it's from a song. Well, it's because it's it says it's, the music stopped. Hmm. She was in a scary movie? Okay, I see what you're saying. The music stopped, the woman dies. Oh, she was in a horror movie. And usually they'll have like a violin or something and then the music will stop and then she dies. I can see that. She was in a bomb and Keanu quit <laughs> Musical chairs, okay. The music stopped, the woman dies. This is, this is an interesting one. I'm not sure we'll like the answer to this one either. I'll give it a little while, then I'm going to see what the hint is. Music over, turn off the lights. Okay. Maybe I'm recognizing it from a song. <laughs> the music stopped, the woman dies. Why? It's over when the fat lady sings. Okay, I like that, Davio. Why not the man dies? Yes, K Pro is thinking outside the box. Why is it a woman that dies? That is true. Why 
Why is it a woman that dies? End of an opera? Okay. I see what you're saying, Davio and Lori. The woman dies. I agree, K Pro. Why is it the woman dies? Hmm. All right, I'm going to the hints. Songs about the woman. Miss American Pie. All right, the hint is the woman works at the circus. The woman is a performer. Oh. The woman works at the circus. The woman is a performer. Okay. Well, the hint pretty much, I think, gives it away. Jack in the Box scares her to death. All right, the woman is a blindfolded tightrope walker at a circus. The music ended a little early, and she knew that she reached the end, so she lost balance and fell to her. The woman is a blindfolded tightrope walker at a circus. The music ended a little early, and she knew that she reached the end, so she lost balance and fell to her. All right, we're done with this website. <laughs> the, bro the booze can come on down. Come on down with the booze. I don't like that one either. All right. I have a riddle that was submitted by AC, formerly known as Velvet Hippo. She made her own riddle and sent it to me. And so we're going to... I. I I got the answer, but I'll admit I wasn't I wasn't very confident when I got the answer. But this is a riddle by E uh, A C, also previously known as Velvet Hippo, and this is her riddle. Add me to the recipe, and a sweet treat you shall see. Remove me from the mix, and a batter's squeeze I'll be. What am I? So let me know what you think. Davio said he was close. All right. <laughs> this is a riddle by who was that who was formerly known as Velvet Hippo, one of my regular Priddle Monday viewers and commenters. Uh, she now goes by A C. At and this is her riddle. Add me to the recipe and a sweet treat you shall see. Remove me from the mix. And a batter squeeze I'll be. What am I? All right, Evan got it. Bunt. It's B-U-N-T, B-U-N-D-T. The answer, and she confirmed this for me today, is Bunt. B-U-N-T, B-U-N-D-T. Evan Penn gets a cookie. All right, see you later, K-Pro. Cookie for Evan Penn. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on from this. All right, we're going to do some brain teasers. There are five sisters in the room. Anne is reading a book. Margaret is cooking. Kate is playing chess. Marie is doing laundry. What is the fifth sister doing? There are five sisters in the room. Anne is reading a book. Margaret is cooking. Kate is playing chess. Marie is doing laundry. What is the fifth sister doing? Reading, cooking, chess, laundry. Anne, Margaret, Kate, Marie, what is the fifth sister doing? Oh, Lori got it. Playing chess with Kate. You can't play chess by yourself. <laughs> oh, that's great, Lori. There are five sisters in the room. Anne is reading a book. Margaret's cooking. Kate is playing chess. Marie is doing laundry. What is the fifth sister 
Man, I should have had that one. Good job, Lori. I'm going to give you your cookie. Cookie for Lori, who got that right off the bat. Good job. I'll tap to see the answer. I just have to click on the thing. Oh, wow. She's playing chess with Kate. The sister's playing chess with Kate. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Insert the missing number. Insert the missing number. We've got nine, one, and then a question mark. All right, well, I think I have the answer, but this is, this is kind of a, my answer is kind of logical. Let's see what else you get. So we're, we're trying to find what's the missing number. What is the missing number for this? We've got three figures. Nine, one, and blank. I've got four, I've got two, I've got four. Four. Okay, I think everybody sees the same thing I does. It looks like it's the number of intersections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got one intersection here and here you've got four. Four crosses, four intersections, right, Evelyn? And Sassy and Jimmy and Evan Penn. Yeah, number of intersections. Evan Penn got it first. Cookie for Evan Penn who got it first. All right, there are two girls. One is facing south. The other faces north. Yet they can see each other without mirrors. How can it be? There are two girls. One is facing south. The other faces north. Yet they can see each other without mirrors. How can it be? All right, I think I have the, I think I know this one. Or maybe not. One is facing south. The other one is facing north. Yet they can see each other without mirrors. They are face to face. Oh yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. I, I, it's not as complicated as you think it is. All right. I was thinking they were standing right on like the North Pole and South Pole, but I couldn't make it work. But they're just located so that they're facing each other, where one is facing South, one is facing North. Okay. They're facing each other. All right. <laughs> Who got that one first? Huli got that one first. Cookie for Huli. What goes through cities and fields but never moves? What goes through cities and fields but never moves? Oh, I think we've had a similar one to this one before. Yeah, okay. Everybody's thinking the same thing. Your name is Jimmy Lag. What goes through cities and fields but never moves? We've had this one similar to it before. Yeah. Roads on a map, I think, is what we all said. Yeah, the road... Eden Sky, or it doesn't have to be on a map. It can be just in the in the world. Eden Sky is first. Eden Sky gets a cookie. What can you see once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years? Okay, I think I got this one. What can you see once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years. And I think I think my viewers and chatters will get this one pretty good. Hey, Sakar. 
Yeah, Steve Wayne is getting what I thought it was. I think it's I think it's the letter M. What can you see once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand? Okay, everybody's getting M's. All right. The letter M. Steve Wayne got it first. Cookie for Steve Wayne. All right, what number is missing? Two, three, four, two, three, question mark, and it's not four. Hmm. M is the symbol for a thousand years in the Roman. Oh, Roman numeral? Is that a thousand? Interesting, Evelyn. What number is missing? We got two, three, four, two, three, question mark. My first thought when I see this, uh, Cal Lazar's had a similar one when it was on a standard transmission in a car. You had the different numbers. But it's not, I don't think it's these numbers, though. Davio says one. Sassy and Lori say five. Okay, I'm going to have to give, going to start, give me a show your work. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Sonny says three. Takar says one. Yeah, there it is. Davio, Davio remembers. It's like... It, I forget the numbers because I don't I, I don't know how to drive standard, I'll admit. But it was what is the sequence and it was the letter R for reverse in the standard transmission in the car. Emma Curry says drive. So it's D, you think? So it's not a number? It's asking for a number. Sonny says it's one lower, it's three. Two three four, two three five. Oh, I see what you're saying, Sassy. It's a number sequence where it's 234 and then 235. Yeah, you're thinking it's R reverse or D for drive, but it's at the question here is asking for a number. I'm just this this question is similar to the Cal Lazar's one from before. Made me think of it, but Sassy thinks it's five. All right, let's see what the answer is. Answer is five to get numbers 234, 235. All right. Sassy got it first. Cookie for Sassy. There we go. So it's a sequence of numbers 234 and then 235. That's what the next number is. So the answer is a five. There's a bathtub. Okay, we've had this one before, but we'll go ahead. There's a bathtub filled with water in front of you. You have a spoon, a cup, and a bucket. What is the fastest way to empty the tub? All right, I'm getting my cookie ready because I have a feeling somebody else will remember this one as soon as they see it. So we'll see who can type the fastest. <laughs> who can type the fastest? There we go, Eden Sky got it. Pull the plug, pull the plug, pull the plug. Eden Sky was first. Yep, yep, yep. Jump in. <laughs> All right, pull the plug. Yep. Add one line to make the equation true. Five plus five plus five plus five equals five, five, five. Add one line to make the equation true. All right, so we're doing some math or something similar to math. P.S. You cannot cross the equal sign. All right, I think I got it. You have to add one line to make the equation true. Lori James says plus 535. All right, that's not, not what I'm thinking. So it's going to be hard to explain in typing it out, but you're going to have to try to type it out to explain, explain your answer. I think I have this one. Add one line to make the equation true. 
And the equation is currently is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 555. Five, five. I'll let you, let's see who can type it out and type it out clear. Add a line to make 5. All right, Sassy. Is, Sassy's got what I was thinking. You, you add a line to change the plus, and she used the first one, and I was thinking the first one also. You add a line to change the plus into a 4. So then it's 545 plus 5 plus 5 equals 555. That's what I was thinking with, with Sassy. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. Sassy got it. Cookie for Sassy. All right, we can do some more. Let's see if there's more. All right. Explain the puzzle. 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals triangle. <laughs> okay, I am baffled. Explain the puzzle. 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals triangle. <laughs> Jimmy Fast says mirror images. Oh, see, I see what you're saying. You take a, one of the threes, you move it around, it looks like an eight. You take one of the sevens, you flip it around, you get a triangle. But I'm trying to see the two. How do you get a fish? Oh, I see. It's a circle and then a triangle. Okay. Put the numbers physically to get the shapes. But like, like Jimmy Fast says, you got to take the mirror image. So 2 plus 2, you keep 1 the way it is, and then you mirror the second one, you get a fish. You take 1, 3, you mirror it. All right, that's pretty clever. The seven's totally giving away, says Sassy. <laughs> All right, I, I didn't see it, but Sassy saw it, and Jimmy Fast looks like this is the first one. All right, here we go. Stack the first number with the second number flipped backwards. So 2 and 2 gives you fish. Three and three gives you eight and seven and seven. All right, good job. Well, you guys, that's good thinking there. I don't, I don't think I would have got that one. The first one that said it mirrored James is Jimmy Fast. There is a cookie for Jimmy Fast. Who got it first? There are three doors in front of you. You have to go through, you have to go through one of them. Behind the first door, a fire is raging. A gunman lurks behind the second one. Behind the third one, there's a lion which hasn't eaten in three years. Which door will you choose? All right, we've had we've had this one before. There are three doors in front of you. I don't remember the answer. <laughs> we've had this one before, but I don't remember the answer. Oh, right. Okay, now I remember. Yeah, when you said, when Steve Lyon says lion, I had to think, why was it lion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lion hasn't eaten in three years, therefore the lion is dead. Right, 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 right. All right. Cookie for Steve, a.k.a. the Wiz, I believe. Yeah, the lion is dead because it hasn't eaten in three years. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's the end. And it's almost time for Cal Lazar's. So I want to thank everybody. Didn't want to give the explanation right away. Okay, good job. Good job, Steve. You made me think about it because I was thinking the lion. Why would the lion be the one to choose? It's because the lion can't survive without food for three years. <laughs> Zombie lion. <laughs> All right, everybody. That is the end of Purtle Monday. I hope everybody had some fun. I hope everybody had some, learned some things. 
and we will do it again next week. Cal Lazar's is coming up next. So go watch Cal Lazar's now. Everybody have a good week, and I will see everybody next Monday.